All right, so in this video, we have a pair of sneakers here that I wanted to discuss the hype of because, uh, frankly, the hype of this shoe has been uh, astronomical. It's been insane. Here we have it, the Sean Witherspoon uh, Air Max 97 One. But these released a couple years ago, and I wanted to do like a follow-up after the hype on the Sean Witherspoon Air Max 97. So let's go ahead and get into the video. What is going on guys, Hess here. Hope you're having a good day out there. Thank you guys for stopping by and watching. If you guys are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you guys are already subscribed, I appreciate y'all. And if you guys can hit that notification bell. If you guys haven't used my website, Collective Kicks, I post a bunch of sneaker deals for you guys on a weekly basis. With the holidays coming up, it's definitely worth checking that out. And big shout out to Kicks World for sending this pair over for me to be able to do this video on. If you haven't heard of Kicks World, it's the first premier subscription service for sneakers. And if you guys want to save between 35 and 45% off, depending on the tier that you select, you guys can use my specific link in the description of the video. So this version of the Air Max 197 or 971, whatever you want to call it, was designed by Sean Witherspoon in a revolutionaries contest on Nike sneakers. There was a handful of different designers from around the globe and you got to vote for the ones that you like the best. And the ones that were voted most made its way to production and you could actually buy a pair. This is the one that I ended up winning the first year of that. They had another year as well with a different pair of Air Maxes that won. But this is the design that Sean Witherspoon did. His design concept looked really crazy. I thought it definitely had Easter vibes to it, but there was a lot more going on to this design uh, the more you know about the story, which is something that you can learn to appreciate. So Sean Witherspoon actually owns Round 2, which is like a consignment shop, and he sources a lot of vintage materials and whatnot for his shops. Uh, but I do kind of feel like the uh, the contest is a little bit skewed because he already had a pretty large following when it came to voting for these. So kind of like a catch-22, like obviously he had a lot of people around him help pump him up and helped him really win the contest, where some of the smaller creatives that were his competition really didn't have that fair shake. That being said, that doesn't take away from the design elements of the shoe and what he delivered here, which was definitely worthy of being created. So it's his first and only silhouette that he did with Nike. And I just want to go over some of the details before I get into the hype train of, of it all. First of all, you have a really interesting material for the upper. It's like a corduroy material. And for every single layer of the Air Max 97 upper, you have different colors up until the yellow. The yellow is the primary color for the top section of the shoe and the tongue, but corduroy throughout and I love the different layers of the corduroy and the way that it was put together. It just really looks clean from the brown to the dark green to the blues and the pink. All the way up, it looks really nice. It looks like you have a pink air unit in the shoe and kind of like an eggshell midsole. Then the outsole traction also kind of pulls the theme back together with the hit of yellow, blue, gray, and pink. Simple but different details that I like. You have one gold and one silver for the laces. And then you also have removable patches on the tongue with a Nike Air and then also a wave. But they pulled out all the stops because the liner of the shoe is actually velour as well. So the behind the tongue and around the collar is velour. Also, even the insole is velour. And then you have this smiley face logo on the insole of the shoe, but they didn't just put a logo there. They actually embroidered it onto the shoe, which again, it's just a really smart, nice detail. This has sticking power with the shoe. A lot of times you have printed material here on the insole and it's the first thing to go. So I love the attention to details in what they created with this shoe. Obviously the biggest difference between this and most Air Max 97s other than the corduroy upper and the velour liner is the midsole. This is an Air Max 1 midsole, not an Air Max 97 midsole. There's a huge difference there. And I think that the average consumer probably still doesn't know that this is a 197 or a 97.1. It's not just an Air Max 97. I know most of us people that are really involved with sneakers obviously know that. We look at it and go, yeah, that's a hybrid, duh. Which is part of the shoe where it's the most confusing because this is a hybrid through and through. This is a hybrid shoe. However, if you have a hybrid like Jordan sneaker, like a Spizike or, you know, a Son of Mars or something like that, everybody hates those shoes. Everybody thinks they're trash, but this is a hybrid of two of the most coveted Air Maxes, but everybody loves this one. They don't call it out as a hybrid and it's actually coveted and actually celebrated, which is very, very unique in this sneaker culture. So I think that's part of the thing about the shoe that I'm most confused by is how uh, it has a hybrid effect there, but nobody treats it as a hybrid. I guess all hybrids aren't treated equally. That being said, it's a killer design. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of the colorways, to be honest. And before I had these in hand, I for sure 100% thought these were super, super overrated. I didn't see all the nice details 
in hand, like the velour liner and the insole. That Those are two little things about the shoe that you go, okay, these are definitely like some well thought out pairs of sneakers. I also like the tearaway upper. You can see where this one's torn a little bit right here, which is by design of the upper. But I like that as you wear them more, it gives them more of a unique personality. So these retailed for 160, I think they released in 17. And they were reselling for around 450s, 500s, uh, right out the gate, which is a pretty big markup, obviously. But now these things are sitting around a rack, like $1,000 for a pair of these in my size, 9.5 is what the going rate is on the Sean Witherspoon. Uh, I think that it's a, a cool model, not a thousand dollar shoe for sure. There was somebody on Twitter that said it right. It's not a thousand dollar shoe, it's a hundred and sixty dollar shoe that you're paying a thousand dollars for. It's a well made hundred and sixty dollar shoe and a very innovative and fun design for 160 bucks but I couldn't pay $1,000 for this shoe. It's just not worth it in my opinion. That being said, I know a lot of you guys disagree and the value of this shoe is gonna go up and up and up because it's just gonna be one of those shoes that everybody kind of goes back to and goes, oh yeah, that's that one Air Max shoe that was kind of cool. This shoe definitely has some strong branding behind it with Sean Witherspoon in round two and, and the community sourced story behind the shoe definitely adds a lot to the value of this shoe and it's only gonna go up like I said. That being said, we have to transition and talk about the lack of hype factor from Sean Witherspoon going over to Adidas. So right after the success of this in 17, he went over to Asics, did a collaboration. It did okay. Wasn't flipping for double the retail of the product or anything like that. But now he has a bunch of different Adidas shoes that he's released on very sort of subpar models. And he's done some very interesting things to the releases like this pair right here. This is a super earth pair of the the ZX8000 that I actually got. And I actually never did a review of these. Unfortunately, when these came out, I had a ton of different things going on, so I didn't do a review on them. It's not that I didn't want to because this shoe is definitely one that I think is kind of cool looking, but the model doesn't really work for a lot of people, no matter how much TLC he put in the shoe. It's just not one of those storytelling things that was crowdsourced. And so I think part of the reason why the success hasn't been there for the Adidas side as it has from the Nike side. You're also talking about the Air Max 97 one versus the ZX8000, which the ZX8000 is probably not everybody's favorite model. He has a lot of other models that I think some people will definitely appreciate from the Adidas side of things, but um, I don't think the same people that bought these are interested in buying those. And that's kind of like a good and a bad thing. Like hype definitely dictates the price of these. Hype doesn't dictate the price of these even though it's made from the same creator. And if I was Sean, I'd be a little bit confused myself of like, why is this worth a thousand dollars and this one only worth like retail or less? I feel like creating your own Nike is such a huge W because not too many people get to be able to do that. And especially on a model like a Nike Air Max lineage model. So I think that was definitely a privilege that he got to take advantage of when he had that contest that he won from these. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I wish the guy's continued success. Hopefully he'll find a right model with Adidas that he can actually put some creative energy behind and then make something really, really dope. I can tell you in hand, the materials on these are not obviously as good as the materials on the Nike pair, which is a bummer. But what do you guys think about the Adidas collaborations that Sean Witherspoon did? Which is your favorite one so far? Do you like them? Have you bought any of them? Or are they lacking some sort of storytelling? Or is the resale element the only thing that you cared about? And so it's not something you guys have touched because the prices are just too low. At the end of the day, I think that he created an amazing Nike Air pair of sneakers and hopefully we'll see some more creative stuff from Sean in the future. I do think that this is probably a one hit wonder from Nike. If you gotta do another collaboration with Nike, I bet it would go crazy, but the ones that we've seen from Adidas, it just really needs like a better model in my opinion. And I realize his narrative has shifted a little bit like to the greener side, Super Earth and whatnot. It's not gonna be for everybody and that could alienate some of the people that were there for this shoe right here. Anyway, thank you guys for stopping by and watching. If you guys wanna use Kicks World subscription service, check my link for the discount in the description. And what do you guys think about the Sean Witherspoons after the hype? Leave a comment as well. Hopefully we'll see you guys back for some more videos and thanks for stopping by, all right? Peace guys.